Now, I have noticed a huge shift in attitude towards certain clubs in the past 12 months. You see, stigmas are finally being challenged, and what that means is elements of the game are proving less difficult. Roll out ball, roll out, roll out. Even putting is changing, and for the better in that case. And whilst I'm not expecting everybody to all of a sudden put a pink chipper in the bag, well, the products featured in today's video, much like the pink chipper, would be deemed an old man's club, and that is a big mistake. And whilst driver performance has certainly stalled over the last few years, manufacturers have concentrated their efforts on other areas in the bag, and the performance of fairway woods, well, that increased significantly. And today I am looking at two fairway woods, one from TaylorMade, which is what I've just hit, and one from Ping. I think they're gonna be huge, big sellers, and I'm gonna to explain to you in today's video why you should really consider putting one of them in your bag. The clubs in question are in fact two seven woods, but they are very, very different in many ways, and all they really share is the same loft, how they get the ball from A to B, how they look, they're very, very different performers, and that's what I aim to highlight in today's video. Once you've seen this, trust me, I bet you, you're gonna to wanna to put one in the bag. So if you are brave enough to try one of these things, then I suggest you get your credit card at the ready, because trust me, once you've hit one of them, I bet you don't wanna put it back on the rack. So this morning, I am out on the golf course in Southern Spain at a resort known as La Hacienda. And trust me, this is a really good golf course that I'm playing this morning. Uh, one of two, this is the Lynx, play the Heathland tomorrow. Plenty of testing coming your way. But I wanna do some on-course testing with these two seven woods, see if what I have seen in terms of dry ball data is actually replicated out on the fairways. Because if it is, then these are, like I said, lofted the same, but very, very different performers. Now the first big difference between these two clubs is visually. You've got the matte finish on the G430, which I'm a huge fan of, and you've got that high gloss crown that you've got on the Stealth. I'm not opposed to it, but I must admit that right now sat behind the ball, I really love what the G430 does. And I also like the white score lines that I've seen on the driver, the hybrids and the fairway woods, the void in the middle, little circle on the top there, little dot on the crown, which frames the ball so well at address. And it just seems to square the ball up a little bit better than the Stealth does, to be quite honest with you. They then sound very different. We'll try and pick some acoustics up as we go, because I'll be hitting, duplicating each shot that I play along the way, see if you can notice any difference. But trust me, there is a difference there. I still think that in that department, the Stealth has it, it's a little bit softer. Whilst there's a huge improvement in the G430 range, it's probably still not as acoustically pleasing as that of the Stealth. That wasn't easy to say. So they're little kind of nuances that would guide you one way or the other, but I suppose the key one being that address position, because that's where you're gonna be sat, um, ready to hit a ball, and where your confidence is most required. Right, so first two shots I'm gonna take a particular interest in. We've got our aesthetics to one side, we decided which club we like. Now you've got to see how they perform differently. Certainly in terms of dry ball data, but what happens in terms of these two tee shots? Well, first of all, I hit the, um, the stealth. And a solid ball, solid ball flight, um, I'd say certainly not floating out there. That ball is firing through the air and it's traveled a couple of hundred yards, which is, we'll confirm that with dry ball data later on. So very much uh, first shot at least, seeing what we've seen inside. Then you go for the G430, totally different ball flight in terms of launch, a much higher ball flight. What's interesting is when we go down to the fairway, you'll just see that there is absolutely nothing to split them both in terms of where they finished on the fairway. The first and most important bit is they were in the center of it, which is really good. So I had plenty of control over that club head. But the surprising bit perhaps is that they landed in the same position because from the ball flight from the G430, that was going that way compared to that of the Stealth, I would have expected to see a difference. Now they're the things that we're going to have a look at when we hit a few more shots from a different a few different locations. Does that continue? Because if that is the case, that's a clear divider, and it's going to be a clear divider in the decision making. Because ball flight launch angle is key, a key parameter in my opinion, to what you like to see 
when you're hitting these kind of shots. Right, okay, so next up is a, a tee shot that I want to play with a slightly sort of left to right shape of shot. So first of all, can I do that? And we start off with the TM product. It went pretty much bullet straight, to be honest with you. This thing absolutely fired off there. A quite a high ball flight as well, different than one that we got on the previous shot. So yeah, it certainly does launch the ball. Um, but in terms of the way it went off the face, it was like an absolute bullet. Really pleased with what it's done. I then go into the G430. This is a real interesting one because if you look closely, I got the ball a little heavy. I got a little bit of turf before ground. And uh, when you consider just how well, first of all, it launched the ball, that speaks volumes for what these clubs do in terms of that word forgiveness. But then when we go down the fairway and have a look at where they finished, what you'll see is, yes, the uh, TM product probably gained a good 15 to 20 yards on the Ping G430 on this occasion. But I think all things considered, quality of strike, which is always the most important thing, the G430 didn't perform too badly. The other point to mention is just how good we've managed to find those tight fairways that I've referred to. So from a confidence club on the tee, I've got to admit, these are certainly the kind of uh, become, very much becoming the go-to clubs in my bag. Absolutely love them. Inspired in terms of confidence, ball flight, the way the thing flies out there, 200 yard-ish or around carry. It doesn't get much better than that. Well, we might as well just have a look at this sneaky little putt because this golf course here is so, so good, but also incredibly tough. And this is uh, a slippy one, to say the least. This is going to stay. Oh, do you know what? I'll take that all day long because I was going to say this one is just going to slide on by. But back to the seven woods and dry ball data. Now, as you can see, both get incredibly good in terms of um, that launch angle. There is a difference. I suppose it's quite a significant one really. This is the averages you're seeing over a sort of 10 shot capture. The ping ball launches the ball higher and therefore the descent angle is steeper. But to be honest with you, both ball flights are sort of acceptable in this kind of range and area that I'm looking for in terms of the distance I'm looking to carry. You then look at the spin number, which is really impressive. That's sort of four and a half thousand revs plus coupled with that descent angle. And these things are stopping on greens. Now. The decisions you're going to make are based on those kind of things, a slightly longer carry distance with the stealth, again, depending on what you're looking to cover in terms of yardage in your bag. And that is one of the key elements because Ping have done something with their lineup that stealth hasn't. And I think that's a big divider. Let me explain. So what is it that divides these clubs so significantly that I think it's, uh, well, I think Ping have stole a bit of a march, Well, it's the fact that you can adjust their fairway woods and that's a key difference because ultimately at this end of the bag you're going to be trying to fill voids and when i say a void you're going to try to fill cover a yardage this seven wood at 21 degrees you can see launches the ball very high covers sort of 195 190 distance whatever it may be and i've got the ability to perhaps change that to both adjust that ball flight if we want to get something a little bit more lower and more penetrating and then perhaps change in terms of the yardage covered as well. And the fact you can't do that on the stealth, well, I think that's a bit of a downer. And I think that they really have got something packed in there in terms of adjustability, particularly in this style of club, that means the Ping G430 has a real sort of advantage in my opinion. Such a good ball flight that, isn't it? Again, almost identical the two shots, to be quite honest with you. I mean, perhaps the interesting thing is they're tried on the um, on both balls, really. I like to set up for a little bit of a cut, and in fact, they're both going bullet straight. So if anything, I've stayed a little bit left of where I'd want to be, but that's encouraging to know that you can aim down the middle. And even with my cutty swing, we're managing to keep that ball in very much a straight line and trajectory. Ball flights again though, so, so good. And like I said, they're the reason why. Get over the stigma, get and try one of these things. And then, like I said, the only warning I've got about getting that credit card at the ready, because I don't know why anybody can hit these things and leave them out the bag. Once again, ball flights phenomenal. I mean, there's an argument there that was slightly into the wind, might've just held a little bit. But uh, once again, Ping just fires up there, 
I'd switch over to stealth. You might as well stay with me because these are literally going to be the last two shots we hit on the course. Same again. I know I can't reach the bunker with this in hand. That's got that little bit of a cut in there. It definitely seems to fire a little bit. I can almost tell that it's again a slightly longer ball and that's been the case throughout all the shots that I've hit really. I'd say the ping pops the ball up a little bit higher. The ball speeds off the face of the stealth seem a little bit quicker and that ball flight being a little bit more of a penetrating flight. So we've definitely seen um, the performance on the fairways replicate what we've seen in terms of dry ball data. And I think it's down to you what you like and what you want to see. But all I do know is that about um, using these type of clubs in that long end of the bag are no brainers. Seven Woods associated them with the, the sort of old boys of your golf club. I think that's long gone. That stigma has completely dropped out. And I think in terms of what manufacturers have done over the last few years is the efforts that they've put in this and the likes are uh, making leaps and bounds in terms of like I said what is a very difficult part of the game I can't tell you I mean they're, they're separated visually they look about 10 yards apart they're literally on top of one another in terms of where they finish couldn't be any happier with my performance with both of these clubs and it'll be a personal preference in terms of the aesthetically and sound and feel and obviously that ball fight as to why you might put one or the other in the bag right that's me finished here um well, i say finished here this video at least i'm at la hacienda and perhaps mentioned that earlier this place is stunning plenty more filming over the next few days here and plenty more videos and comparison videos to come your way as ever thank you for watching and i will see you all very soon probably tomorrow <laughs>